Christ is risen. Resurrection Sunday is the feast of feasts for the church. And on this, the third Sunday of Easter, we also celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Whenever the church gathers to celebrate the Holy Feast, the Holy Eucharist, whether it's the Feast of the Nativity, the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, the Feast of the Transfiguration, Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, His death, His resurrection, His ascension, or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the Feast of Pentecost. As we have mentioned before during Holy Week, the church doesn't celebrate these simply as historical events, the mere remembrance of things that happened many years ago. The church celebrate these as participants in the holy mystery. The holy mystery being that for the church, these feasts are being present with the Lord. These feasts are actually taking place in the presence, in the presence and in the present with Christ in the Holy Spirit. In other words, as we say, we worship in spirit and in truth, in the Holy Spirit and in Christ. And that's why the church proclaims Christ is born in Bethlehem, Christ is baptized in the River Jordan. Christ is transfigured on the Holy Mount. Christ is instituting the Holy Eucharist at the Last Supper. Christ is crucified. Christ is dead. Christ is buried. Christ is risen, but never Christ was. At the Nativity, Christ is born. Glorify him. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. The present reality. When we say, do this in remembrance of me, remember that word is anamnesis. The past in that holy mystery that we call the Holy Eucharist becomes real. It's an act of God, the grace of God, the Holy Spirit moving in the church. Christ is seated with us. Christ is seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Well, how is that possible? How is it that Christ can be in... How is that possible? Well, God is beyond all time and all space. Yet God enters into time and space. God condescends, comes to us, divests God's self of his infinite power and dwells with us in the person of his son. And therefore Christ our God is present. He's communing with He's joining with the church in that great mystery of the Holy Eucharist, meaning the holy work of God's people, which we call the liturgy, the work of the people. God is in our midst. Those with the eyes of faith will see him. They will look upon him. God is gifting the church with God's very present by God's grace. God's grace, the uncreated energies of the Holy Spirit make this holy mystery real for the faithful church. And the risen Lord is open in the eyes of the church to truly recognize him for who he is. And so to enter into his eternal joy right here and right now that our hearts may burn within us. That's why today the church is walking the road to Emmaus 
in Christ and with Christ. And one could say that the church is always walking the road to Emmaus. For the church, the road to Emmaus isn't some pathway that you might find on a map. It's seven miles outside of Jerusalem. Because the church walked the road to Emmaus, the church might expect life-changing encounters on the road, on the way with the risen Christ. And this certainly is the truth. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself comes near and goes with them, but their eyes are kept from recognizing him. But as the true and repentant church open their souls to who he is, as they walk with him, he reveals himself as confident, our confidant and our comforter, also our teacher, also the truth. And then at table, in the breaking of the bread, he reveals himself as the one who transcends time and space that we can't see right now because he has a resurrected spiritual body. But Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be. On the road to Emmaus, the church encounter confusion, sorrow, vulnerability, loss of sight, for the future, but they also encounter him, the risen Christ. And yet in our trials and tribulations that we face, we too ask, are you the only stranger who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? Can there be such irony? During the three days before, he voluntarily takes all the sin of the world upon himself. He dies when he need not die. He tramples down death by his death. He preaches the good news of his victory to the souls of the dead, those that have been dead from the beginning of time. Is he the only one who does not know? No, he is the only one that fully knows just exactly what has, just exactly what is taking place in these days, in all days. We, however, are unaware or unwilling to encounter the reality of him whose very presence is the resurrection, whose very presence is the way, the truth, and eternal life. Therefore, Christ's death and resurrection brings understanding to this age and to all of history. As one saint wrote, he took the word history and separates it into his, with a capital H, and story, his story. The story of the love that suffers, the love that comes to us, the love that self-sacrifice, the love that resurrects, the love that defeats death by death, the life and the love that resurrects and recreates the likes of you and me. And then Jesus says, because of this, our inability to see, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted, he reveals all things about himself in all the scriptures. Does the church not encounter this in word and sacrament? That was my calling put upon me, to deliver the word and sacrament to God's people. In the liturgy, in living, in studying the scriptures, 
and in reading the great saints in the church. Life is a journey filled with these life-changing moments that define not just who we are, but whose we are. And do we recognize him? For surely he knows us intimately. Often we're not aware that it is Jesus with us. But remember, the pure in heart shall see God. Nonetheless, the risen Christ is still leading, still examining us to see if we believe in him and if we believe him, that he is the prophesied one, the one that the law, the prophets, the Psalms point to, that he suffers, he dies, he rises again in order to fulfill the Holy Scriptures. But the risen Christ continues to open the Holy Scriptures and reveals that he is in the scriptures. This is a little too much. Sometimes the disciples need to rest. So they find a home from what's gone on in the world that we so often think God is the only one that doesn't know what's going on in our lives and around the world. And so we find a place of rest, like this place. And it is now and it is here in the breaking of the bread that the eyes of his faithful disciples are opened and they recognize the one that is speaking to them on the road to Emmaus on the road to all the difficulties that we face each and every day when we dare to think or feel that God doesn't really know God knows God cares. And here the breaking of the bread isn't simply about a meal of bread and wine, but much, much more. It's about his body and his blood, meaning his resurrected life. For indeed, the church is his body. He gives his body to his body. That's why we call this a holy mystery. It's beyond human comprehension, but it's the reality that the church enters into every Holy Eucharist. His body and blood the, in this mystery of mysteries nourishes the church. His body to his body, his life to the life of the church. He brings his life, his love, his union and communion to the church. We become at one with the resurrected Christ, the Savior of the world. Yes, one can encounter him by staying at home and listening to sermons and joining fellowship groups, midweek groups, praying and reading the Holy Scriptures and the lives of the saints. But by partaking in his body and blood, the true union occurs with Christ and the church. His body enters his body, meaning the church. What a profound mystery. And anything less than that, well, it's only partial. Today realize that when you receive the body and blood of Christ, you are truly receiving the resurrected Christ in his life, in your life, his body, in your body, his mind, with your mind, so that we may decrease, so that he may increase without ceasing to be our own unique self.
His disciples are on a journey, a road to Emmaus, or to any other calling that comes from God. And on, on this journey, the ultimate goal is union and communion with Christ our God, all the while encountering him, seeking him, repenting that we may open the eyes of faith. And when the eyes of faith are opened, those that are truly in love with the Lord, those don't, don't think of him as just something outside of themselves, but an ever and real present reality within their very souls, the kingdom of God within, they proclaim him. They live the reality that he is with us, even into the end of the age. And that is why we proclaim, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs>